Welcome back to Hewitt Goldberg. Today we're going to be talking about the CompTIA Security Plus certification. Is it worthwhile and what was my experience? Now CompTIA, just speaking generally, well regarded by the government and government contractors. In the private sector, I have seen some preference towards Cisco certifications, although you're going to have overlap. It will all depend on the company and you know who you're serving as far as your customer goes. I completed this actually back in 2019, so as you might know, if you are looking at examination, things have changed a tad bit, although a lot of the material remains more or less, you know, within the same category. So the way it works, if you are interested in getting into cybersecurity, Security Plus is seen as a good first step, but of course there are many other certifications. It is not an impossible test, but it does take a certain level of preparation, particularly if you don't have any background in you know, information technology or security systems. So my approach involved a couple of things. First of all, this book by Daryl Gibson, you will see that it's the 501 version. He has not come out with the 601 yet. So if you're looking towards that, most of what's in the book will still be absolutely valid, but you're gonna have a few concepts that you may have to get supplemental information uh, concerning that. I like this book because it is very much to the point. It's easy to read. I had checked out the CEH text and that was atrocious. I kind of rage quit and got a refund because he had all these anecdotal stories and information that you really don't need. This book by Gibson, on the other hand, is quite excellent. Of course, though, he does not bring up the performance-based questions, the practicals, so you're going to have to look elsewhere uh, to see about that. And I think this retails for about 40 bucks, uh, depending on whether you get the physical copy or the Kindle. Also, if you can check through your library, you might have access to lynda.com. There's a course on Security Plus. It is based upon the 401 version, so it's a little bit outdated, but still much of the information is sound. Uh, he has these little bullet points and says this is stuff to study, and it's important because some of the terminology he uses is not employed in the actual Daryl Gibson book. So there was one point on the exam where a rootkit, I think, was called like crypto malware, and I'd never seen that in Gibson's book whereas I did catch it because it was on lynda.com. So be aware of that. Sometimes they'll try to trip you up as far as uh, the multiple choice questions or in other areas of the exam. You can see here the new version 601 launches November 12th, 2020. But a lot of the guidebooks are still have not been released yet. One of them actually says April 2021. So if you're just getting into it now, you could just look at free sources, begin studying. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there. Uh, don't be afraid to get a head start because the textbooks for some people are just too dry. You might want to look into uh, going to a class instead of getting the textbook. It all depends on the person. And this information concerns what are it's the new uh, segments or elements that are going to be in 601. Cloud support, growth of virtualization, common mobile device security breaches, securing online payment systems. Uh, much of this is already on 501, and this is going to be kind of vague. They're trying to sell you some products, but just be aware of that. Hopefully, Gibson will release a 601 book, but I have not heard word yet, so it's going to be, you know, kind of up in the air. But that book, like I said, is one of the better options out there if you are willing to read out of a book and study. Here we go, this is his website. He's got some information about the performance-based questions. You can check that out. And also this, this is like a whole PDF and it goes into some of the ones that you might see on the exam. So you can check that out as well. As far as the exam itself, so I brought up in other videos, the website gets certified for less. I will include a link to that. You can purchase vouchers which are uh, expiring sooner and you get a little bit of a discount. That's what I ended up doing, but you should only do that once you feel like you're ready. And then they sent me actually some performance questions. I think it were like 30 or so. They sent me those for free but obviously you have less time once you purchase the voucher. So preferably, if you can look at something like this, InfoSec Institute, 
you can get into them and be very comfortable so you don't have to cram at the last minute. Uh, test itself, 75 questions an hour and a half, although mine was 82 questions, so maybe they modified it a bit. My advice is, and you'll probably hear this in many cases with exams, go through all the questions first, make sure you have an answer, and just flag the ones you're not sure of so you can go back. You don't want to get bogged down and then have like 20 questions unanswered because especially the multiple choice is where you're liable to rack up the most points. So don't say, oh, you know, this performance I'm not sure about. Just put a little flag on it, keep going, maximize as much as possible what you can earn such that you don't lose out because you just, you know, ran out the clock. Now, once you actually pass the exam, hopefully you do, others you can look at in the future. Many people go to CEH if you're interested in cybersecurity or CASP. Now, technically you could do CISSP, but that is a very difficult exam, especially for someone with no background. It's a very long exam as well. CEH, I know you, I think you have to actually either have so much experience or you have to take a fairly pricey class to get it. CASP, I'm not entirely certain, and then you have other cyber certifications, but these are the main ones that at least I've heard being promoted as a good option. So, um, you know, like I said, if you're looking at the certification, definitely uh, consider those resources I mentioned. If there's a class available, especially if your company pays for it, go ahead and take it. It can speed up the process. A lot of this is about can you memorize information, but also in some cases, are you able to apply it effectively? So uh, hopefully this was useful, and if there's any other topics you want to see brought up, please drop them below.